What's up guys, I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for October 26th, 2020. For those of you guys who don't know what Week in Review is, it is my Monday video that we put out every week, at least we try to, where we take all of the official Star Citizen news, anything that was posted in the past week, we jumble it all into one video, and I insert some of my opinions there. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave comments below on anything we talk about. As always, all of the links for everything we discuss will be in the description. Also, I live stream on Twitch six days a week, every day, but Monday starting at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So if you guys want to talk to me about any of my videos or just stop by and say hello, make sure you stop by twitch.tv slash salty mic. All right, let's jump into the video. We had, I guess we had a PTU patch and a live patch this week. Um, starting out with the live patch is basically the PTU patch. So we're going to go with 3.11c. People were having a lot of Moby issues where their Moby glass was disappearing. So this core tech feature resolves that. And um, the other thing was players cannot crash the server anymore when you kill somebody in prison. That was a problem. Um, I'm seeing a lot less 30Ks now after this patch than I had before them. And more so, this was kind of the bigger thing for me personally, this is where I was having a lot of issues, is they seem to fix some shopping slash PMA and VMA service crashes. So um, that might be what the fix to service crash means there. Moving on to roadmap updates, this is the, I guess, semi-depressing um, roadmap roundup that we got this week. First off, they added a few things to the 312 roadmap. Things that we already knew about, but now that they're officially there. The Bering AO3 Sniper, which we saw in the sneak peek last week. There is a Bering FS9 LMG as well added to the roadmap. Vehicle entry identification. Um, apparently, I guess people were having a hard time finding doors on some ships, maybe the larger ships. So they felt there was a need for this, I guess. Um, you know, just a quality of life issue being added to 3.12. Next. The tractor beam, all they really did here was they updated the, the description on the card. Nothing really changed with it. Um, but basically, if you guys don't know, the tractor beam is an addition to the multi-tool that should help us move boxes without having to pick them up. Uh, and then object push and pull, which was supposed to kind of coincide with this, unfortunately, uh, is not going to be in 3.12. It is moved to 3.13. They're just not happy with the way it is, and it's not going to make it into the patch. And I'm like... As disappointing as this might be, I guess, because it was one of the major features in the patch, you can't put something in like this broken. It just doesn't work. So, you know, if it doesn't work, why have it in there, right? So it's not working. Um, death animation improvements. Obviously, that's just not really important. So prioritization was done there. It's been moved out um, and is likely going to end up in 313. Same with ship hazard and awareness and avoidance. Uh, it's just not getting done in time. It's not because it wasn't important. It just, I don't know. This one is probably the one that disappoints me more than anything because this is really important for the future of the game in the idea of this allows NPCs to come and fly down to, on the, to the surface or be on the surface and missions that have NPCs flying ships in atmosphere, this is kind of one of the prerequisites for that. So not having that kind of stinks, but oh well. Also, the next one, this is the one that got a lot of contention, but I think they explain it pretty well here, is the server-to-client actor networking rework apparently was never a thing. So this server-to-client actor thing is a, a, a big task with a bunch of different subtasks to it. So instead of having it on the roadmap, they this is their words. Um, this has been in the roadmap, I, I was told, I don't know if this is um, proper, but it was on the roadmap from 3.4, it's been delayed from 3.4 all the way down. So basically what they're saying kind of does make sense, because nothing's ever been delayed that much. Um, basically it's just a number of networking tasks. So we'll see sync improve over time, we'll see things get better over time as they do the little tasks related to the overall fix of server to client to actor networking um so we'll see with that but yeah it was apparently never a thing in the first place just psych <laughs> i don't know that that was just a weird one but in the end um we are seeing improvements to it so everything they're saying makes sense to me uh mystery armor first 
They start out, well, they end out with, it's not the Titan suit, but we'll start out with that. And second, Squadron 42 stuff took priority on this one, so hopefully we'll see it in 313. Moving on to the Reddit roadmap from Odysseus Ithaca. It's a little bit easier to read. Small updates we saw on spacecaping, refinery decks, station-based refining, and tractor beam. And then some medium progress on the Talon, which is about two-thirds done. Moving on to video updates. There comes a time where Inside Star Citizen is so good to me, I guess, because it was a mining thing, that we pretty much touch on almost everything that they touched on, and we don't really take any of... There's not much fluff there to take out. So, mining updates. Uh, they obviously moved to building blocks. Which if you don't know, it's their UI system that makes life much easier for the devs to iterate on it and to add and subtract things from it as things are, you know, taken in and out of the game. Let's start with a good look at it first, and also probably with our most needed addition to the UI for miners. The flight UI, for example. We felt that we could provide at least some of the flight UI information, such as your throttle speed and your current velocity, which means that you, there'll be no nasty surprises like, I'm in decoupled mode and I don't realize it, and I'm, just, I'm drifting and I don't know why. Anything else that was catching players out, such as accidentally flying into the ground when trying to mine a deposit. So uh, we felt that, that was kind of helpful to have. Seeing your flight UI is really important, whether you're on um, a moon or a planet, because they have a lot of high winds and storms that happen occasionally, and you can get blown into a rock. And like while you were stable at one point, you might not be in another time. So it's nice to know how much power you're putting into things. It's just very good to have there. And that's all the way on the left side. To the right of that, they're showing the mining consumable UI. And my biggest takeaway from this is something that they didn't mention is when I use consumables, I can only use one at a time. You, they obviously stack if multiple individuals are using them, but for one laser, I was only able to use one consumable. This UI seems to show otherwise. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that comes in to 3.12 if you're able to stack yourself because that makes some consumables worth actually taking with you where others in the past weren't like the instability and um, resistance ones a lot of times maybe weren't as important to take but now they can now that you could stack them they're kind of more usable uh, next is in my opinion likely the best change is the cargo readout in addition to that we also felt that the readability of what you were actually mining was not a hundred percent where it could be we had the cargo hold um, element in there, which originally was just an SCU readout and the progress bar of zero to 100%. And what we ended up feeling would be beneficial to the players to be able to see what's actually in your cargo hold. So we have now a new component in the UI that not only shows you what is in there, but actually updates in real time. Again, very similar to this, we added uh, the functionality of viewing whether something is volatile in there and whether there's a danger. And this is one of the things that we weren't really showing off properly in the UI, and we we now are. Being able to see what's in the hold allows you to make better mining decisions on what to take in and what to leave. So you know kind of how much quantanium or agresium or whatever you're mining is in your ship, how much SCU, and you can decide, oh, am I going to take that 20% quantanium or, or am I going to go for more value in the future uh, as I mine throughout the day? So I think that that's pretty awesome. And lastly, we have, obviously I mentioned Quantanium, so we have Volatile Cargo now, and they added a cool update with that, and they, you know, had a little bit to share with us with it. Volatile Cargo in your cargo hold component will be highlighted in red, so that you really see that you've got that in your cargo hold at any point. Beneath that is a Volatile Cargo display, which will show you the, the exact percentage of health from zero to 100% as well as the ETA on the time it will collapse and the timer will come down again in real time and will update whenever you take a bump as well. Out of everything they said here, what I'm looking forward to most testing, I think, is if we bump, how much of a factor that plays into uh, how unstable the cargo becomes, which is pretty cool. We also had a sprint report this uh, week, so there's a lot to go over here, so we'll kind of just jump right through it. They're doing a pass on lighting in the ships to make sure that they're less resource heavy. They also uh, had the weapons concept team 
make multiple weapons that were not lethal. I feel like there's more than what we saw here, but they showed us two. A taser and a med gun. Now, the med gun is the most interesting to me. As Jared mentioned, it was a beam. Uh, I thought it would be something maybe you stick into a player, but it, it sticks out to me because it's just cool to imagine what the game will be like with these elements in it. So running around and healing your teammates and, and instead of being a, you know, just a gunfight all the time, that there's different classes that can kind of come into play now. Uh, the props team is working on damage sensitive, time sensitive, and quantum sensitive cargo items. We've seen all these before, but this is the first time they explained what each one actually was. They're also working on chaff visuals, which um, is, chaff is becoming very important in combat, so having it look good is always important to Star Citizen. Fire Propagation, speaking of looking good, is looking pretty wild now, coming from what we saw in the past to what we're seeing now. It's uh, pretty crazy, so can't wait to kind of see what happens with that whenever it does end up in the game. Refinery Dex art is starting to get shown more as well. Uh, they said they need more soft body elements in, in there because it was pretty all metal and, and all that, so just kind of soften things up. And uh, for me personally, I, don't, I think cargo decks did not really hit very well in Star Citizen 3.11. Uh, I'm just hoping refineries have more functionality than cargo decks, because there's really no purpose to go to cargo, cargo decks at the moment. Uh, updating derelict ships as well. This is just extra work for people that had more time is what it sounded like, um, to just make sure that they look more derelict than they did in the past. Ship to station docking concept was approved that we've seen in a previous sprint report and now they're figuring out where to put them on stations. Uh, they want there to be nice views, not just from the dock, but also from the station to see people docking. Uh, so they're kind of trying to figure out what works best with that. We also had a Star Citizen Live this week, but it was a Jared and Jay Lee episode, which are always a must watch, but they usually aren't the most like what's going on with Star Citizen heavy discussion. So link as always will be in the description. You gotta check it out, it's down below. Other updates this week. Scanning discussion with Mark Aben. This one was pretty cool. He starts out with just a kind of a brief explanation on what scanning is and how it, what it is versus radar, uh, and that you can also mask your signature on larger ships now, I believe, which apparently is in, so I kind of have to test this and try it. I don't know if it's in for sure. Uh, then the thread has a few more questions from a, a lot of prominent members of the Star Citizen community, and we had a few questions asked. White Snake, who's been on ATC, uh, asked about a few things. And I guess what we got here is that ping visuals are getting a huge overhaul, which is obviously needed. Anybody who's used scanning, they're kind of an eyesore. And that the limitations right now to how far you can ping is a tech limitation. And that may be resolved in the future, but it sounds like a kind of who knows kind of thing um, at the moment. We also had a Theaters of War update this week, but as always, they're not really saying anything that they don't say normally. It's great for balance, and apparently it's great for balance without us playing it. Uh, so it'll be here soon, and they have a small team, so just be patient. It's the same thing. Um, it is a disappointment, but it is what it is. We also had a sneak peek this week, handcuffs, which apply I hope implies that we can use them uh, at some point, and uh, I think that would be really awesome for pirates and bounty hunters and people just trolling daisy vibes anyone I'm, I'm getting daisy vibes from that as always we had our standard galactopedia update and a lore post drifters part two this is another one from jump point so if it's new to you enjoy but if you've already read it in jump point it is a repost and lastly this is the biggest one and likely the thing that i use the thumbnail for to try and get you guys in here is Finally, Star Citizen can be a proper survival slash FPS game as well now because there is a Reddit post showing that you can not only see, but you can damage a player from 1,800 meters in-game. The previous limit, in my experience, was like 200. So this is very big. There were hints that this would be possible in previous monthly reports, but I'm not going to lie, I never thought I would see the day. This is extremely exciting. Huge progress for Star Citizen there. It might seem small to you, but 
for the grand scheme of things of this becoming an actual video game and not just playable concept art, this is a big, big deal. And with that, guys, I will leave it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure you hit that like button, leave comments below, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, make sure you check out my live stream. Again, all of the reference links are in the description below, and I will see you guys next time.